Okay. Uh, demonstration time. Let's see if I can get up here. Uh, I'm getting old. I used to leap up on the counter. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, I'm I'm going to turn. How old to this year? Forty-nine. I will turn forty-nine this year. I don't look a day older than 45, do I? <laughs> All right. Okay, so, so, so here's... <laughs> bad force scale. Here's the deal, here's the deal with, the, with this whole apparatus. This is why it's been up there uh, the whole time. Um, nowadays, if you want to find out how fast a bullet is going, um, what you do is you take your, uh, uh, whatever it is, rifle or whatever, to a shooting range that has a tachometer. Okay, and a tachometer is something that just measures how fast bullets go, right? And the way it works is it's got these, these little photo gates. Bullets cast shadows, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, even though they're not so fast that they don't cast a shadow, right? I had a kid argue about that. Like, no, it's still a shadow, right? Anyway, um, and, and what they do is they've got these little light sensors, and when the bullet goes over the first sensor, it casts a shadow on the sensor, and it starts a clock going, right? And then, um, and by the way, the muzzle flash can also trigger those things too, so you gotta be far enough away that the muzzle flash doesn't trigger it, right? Um, and then uh, when it passes over the second one, it, it stops the timer and then it divides or something like that and it tells you how fast immediately in feet per second. So you can just sit there and go bam, 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 and it'll tell you feet per second, right? And then the reason why you want to know feet per second, typically the people who own tachometers are the people that reload shells Right, because you want to put, there's, there's a certain maximum feet per second and minimum feet per second um, for, for certain shells. And the reason that it's important, especially with a rifle, a rifle's a big long barrel, and what you need to know is that, that, that those lead bullets engage the barrel of the rifle and spin, right? That's, that way, that's what makes it a rifle, is that they spin. That's what makes rifles accurate, right? Um, because the bullet spins, so any imperfection is, is uniformly, it'll go through the air like this, you know, if it does anything, right? And it'll still be straight. Um, and so if the rifle bullet is too fast, that's bad because you risk bursting the, the, the breech itself, right? In other words, there's too much powder, but too little powder is bad too because um, the bullet will stop on its way out, right? And this is never, you can't shake it out. It's not like this dart and you can just shake it out. It's frozen to the walls of the, of the rifle. And, and then the worst thing is you can't, there's no easy way to get it out of there. It's a trip to the gunsmith because um, because you, if you try to get it out of there yourself, you might screw up the rifling, right? So, so, so anyway, why are we talking about this? Oh, oh, okay, okay, random story. My dad had a, um, my dad had a rifle, and it was, a, uh, I believe it was a German rifle from World War II, and it was worth some kind of amount of money, but he just had it, and we would shoot it up at our cabin, right? Because that's, you know, that's where you go to shoot your rifle, right? And um, that's right, you know. Well, you know those, you, you might be a redneck, I always read those and I'm like, yeah, I do that. <laughs> I think it's also if you're really cheap, you know, it's also true. But anyway, this rifle had a bullet stuck in the barrel, not because we loaded our own shells, but probably because we didn't store the ammunition correctly. Okay, I'm, I'm just guessing. You're not supposed to leave it in the cabin and over the winter and, you know, for like five years or something like that. But anyway, you know, but, but anyway, the bullet was stuck in the barrel. We didn't know any gunsmiths. We went home and left it in the cabin. Somebody stole it over the, over the uh, winter. Like there's nobody there because it's 20 below and there's snow drifts four feet tall and stuff, right? Somebody steals the rifle. Now, moral dilemma. Do you hope that they checked before they shot a bullet out of it, right? Or do you hope that they didn't check, right? I think you hope that they checked. No, Yeah, they probably did. I mean, anybody, anybody who gets a new rifle, you, that's the first thing. You just open it up, look. If you don't see daylight, that's bad, right? And, and then here's a weird thing about it right about about rifles is that even if you just get a little bit of dirt in the end and I don't know why this is like like for example you just stick it down you never do this right but if you accidentally put it down on the ground it could take a little core sample of the ground right and you get a little bit of dirt you know what I'm talking about right just a little bit of dirt will make it blow up <laughs> I, I don't know why this is I, it must be some inertia thing but it'll just you know it'll just and you don't want to see that because that's like hardened steel and and uh, it's bad why are we talking about this Oh, because, because before, digital, <laughs> I'm in a weird space today. Okay, before there were digital tachometers, before there were digital tachometers, okay, this is how they determined the speed of bullets. They used a ballistic pendulum. Does it say ballistic pendulum on yes. there? Yeah, there you go. All right, so there, there it is, right? Are we ready for this? Yes. Nothing prepares you for this. Okay. 
And you do it from some distance. You, you want the bullet only to make it swing to the side, not the muzzle blast from the bullet. So you do it from some distance. And you got to shoot it straight in, straight level. Here we go. Right? That's pretty nice. A little applause for that. Woo! Right? Now, it makes sense that the farther it swings up, the faster the bullet's going. Right? And, and if we knew the mass of this and the mass of the bullet, we could figure out the speed the bullet's going, it seems like, right? Um, the way that, and I've had kids do this. In fact, that's what that block of wood is right there, is, is um, a kid named Jeff Ar Arbuckle, I believe, uh, did that, because he couldn't go to Oaks Park, so I said, well, just do some other lab. So he did a real ballistic pendulum, right? Um, uh, but anyway, what, what they would do, what kids do now is they just take video of it, right? Some kids even did this, I think, with, uh, uh, yeah, the physics thing, right? Okay. Uh, they just take video of it, and it's really easy to look frame by frame how high it goes. But back in the day, um, they didn't so much have digital video analysis, right? If they had that, they'd have also feet per second tachometers, right? Okay. So what, what they did in the day was that they stuck a, um, like a horse hair off the side, right? Some kind of stiff hair sticking off the side like that, right? And then they would, um, they would take uh, a mirror or, or a sheet of glass and hold it over a candle and put soot on it, right? And then just put that off to the side and so that when the thing swung up, it would make a little track in the soot. Almost no friction, right, at all. So it wouldn't really affect the height, but you could easily measure the height, right? And then you could do several trials, just move the glass over and just measure them like that. So that's kind of cool. And now the dismount. No, it wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. Okay. So um, let me show you how to solve this, these kinds of problems. Um, and then, I think in the homework tonight, there are problems that are like this. And then we'll do some more conservation of momentum problems. And we'll do our little skill set. So. Okay, so I'm going to draw three pictures for this because I hope by now you guys know that it's not true that the kinetic energy of this bullet, okay, it's not true that that's going to turn into the potential energy of this bullet in block because a lot of it's going to turn into heat, correct? So we have to do a conservation of momentum problem. So this bullet, I'm going to draw a picture here and here. Right, so here's picture number one. Here's picture number two. And you could argue that theoretically picture number two never exists. In picture two, the block has not risen to any height, yet the bullet is fully embedded in the block, right? But to the extent that that happens quickly and that the strings are long, why is that an issue? Because as soon as, as soon as it starts to swing up, the strings are slowing the block down, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, so momentum technically is not conserved. So you want the strings long enough so that the bullet can fully embed before the thing is swung very far. And, and generally that's true because the bullets stick in a block pretty fast, yes? They're going fast, they stick pretty fast, right? Okay. And then, so here in this picture, the block and the bullet are moving at a somewhat more stately pace, right? And then, sure, the block has swung, has swung, swing, swang, swung. Yesterday it swang, and it has swung. I don't, I don't even know. I speak English. I don't know. There it is. See, there's the block. The block is there to some height, right? From here to here, we're going to use momentum, right? Momentum is going to be conserved in this collision. From here to here, we're going to use energy, yeah? So this is when blocks or bowling balls and stuff swing on pendulum strings. That's a perfect opportunity for energy, but not so much for momentum because here we have momentum, here we have none. Where does it go, by the way? To the earth, maybe? And the Earth is very large. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, really gigantic. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and set this guy up. This is 0 0.012 kilograms times 351 plus zero. This guy's not moving, right? Right, and then that equals, and then this is 3.215 plus point. 0.012 times, and we don't know, 